Leave the truck sooner or later. Just outside of Los Angeles, heading towards Long Beach. And on narrower streets, it might be more congested. I don't know. Just thinking. Just thinking, and it was a hurting. Kind of scary about the LA traffic we've heard so much about. It's taking about 10 minutes to get off on the exit. And we're in San Pedro. We were heading originally to go see the USS Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier. It was in port and you could tour it. But as we got closer, we realized that there was huge lineups, everything like that. So we took an alternative tour. We did return the following day earlier and did tour the Abraham Lincoln. But for now, we're heading to Long Beach to take a look at the Queen Mary. And I tell you, look at this traffic. This is in August, somewhere between 10, 11 a.m. in the morning, so it's not early. It's clouded over, overcast, but not cold by any standard, and there's no one around. Cindy's going, where did all the people go? It's like a ghost town. And really, when you hear about all the traffic woes of L.A., Cindy and I never really encountered any of that in our travels. We've actually had worse traffic approaching Vancouver and around uh, the lower mainland of British Columbia than we've had down there. Great signs all over pointing the way because we didn't have a GPS at that time. We got a map at the hotel we're staying at, street map, and used that to navigate around and had no problems. The 30 minutes no charge up to one hour is three bucks after one like hour. The port of Long Beach is incredible. It is one of the largest ports in the United States. I think it could be very well the largest port on the west coast. Maybe San Diego would be pretty close to it also, but it's huge. All kinds of uh, ships are docking continually, stuff being unloaded. But before we get to the Queen Mary, i got to tell you one of the really things that I wasn't expecting as we're heading out to Long Beach from the L.A. side of Orange County, I guess, has to do with all the oil wells that we've seen. There's oil wells all along the interstate, close to the bridge, in industrial sections, pumping away, pumping out oil, oil, oil. The Queen Mary has been docked here for some time. It's a hotel, tourist attraction, restaurant, there's events, haunted ship, there's ghost tours, all kinds of different things that you can uh, take part in event-wise. We came to tour her and in her day, in the 1930s, 1940s, she was used in the 1940s to transport troops from North America to Europe, World War II. But aside of that, she was state-of-the-art luxury ocean liner. The best in her day. There's not a, a cruise, a, a, not a cruise, but there's not a cabin on the outside with the balcony like you see on today's cruise ships. And in those days, you still had to have people on watch. Imagine in 1930s. The ships didn't use radar that extensively, if they did at all. I don't, I'm not sure exactly when radar got to be popular, but it wasn't as extensive as today. $10.95 per person, $10.95, very worth it. It's an absolutely amazing thing. The art of the Queen Mary, RMS Queen Mary. And it's almost like a gallery. They have a place for all the artwork and things that were on the ship at that time. 
The videos are shot by Cindy. She loves art. She's an artist. She's done paintings, photography. Videography can be considered an art the way she does it. Getting back to the thing about radar, though. Like I said, in the 30s, even the big ships they didn't use radar. People had to learn to navigate uh, by charts and sextant and uh, they had people on watch and stuff like that. Today in the Okanagan, we have the Okanagan Lake, uh, Okanagan Lake it is, and we have boats out here that have radar on it and, and the lake isn't even that big. It's become so commonplace. It's like GPS's. It's really amazing to tour one of these classic old ships. And I tell you, I keep thinking, man, if these walls could talk. I mean, imagine all the people that crossed the Atlantic on her. And in her day, you didn't have much options. In the 1930s, think of this. It was 1938 when the first non-stop transatlantic flight took place. And it took close to 24 hours to do it. It was such an achievement that thousands of people showed up on the sh on the at the airport when the plane landed. Thousands came out to witness this historic event, flying non-stop across the Atlantic. But in reality, it was the transatlantic flights that did in these ships. The elite, the wealthy, royalty, passengers by the thousands crossed the ocean on ocean liners until it became affordable to do so by airplane and commonplace more so into the 1950s 60s as jets started to fly but they are beautiful there's real craftsmanship in the manufacture of these uh, ships or this ship anyway this is the only one that I've ever wandered around inside and you take a look at that woodwork and all the fittings and everything like that and you know that it was made by craftsmen everything had to be first class even though by today's standards it's so so different Laminate. Lots of beautiful laminated uh, polished wood all over and you take a look at those corners rounded out. I don't know for a fact, I'm just kind of thinking about it, but on ships you wouldn't want to have sharp angles because if it's being tossed around in the ocean, you know, you could really hurt yourself hitting that. So at least that makes sense to me. I'll stick to that story. There is something said for the class in those days. Like, you, you know, you take a look at the inside of this uh, ship and, as I said, all that polished wood. And you think about the great trains of yesterday and, and the coaches they had. And again, it was much the same. Uh, everything was built to a very high standard. Not just to look that way, but it was built that way. And the difference between that is I have been involved in construction and... Uh, Sometimes things that look really great, if you take away the surface of it, it's not that underneath. It's just made to look that way. And therefore, it, it already is built with uh, a limited lifespan in it. It's a stunning experience wandering around, like I said, and if you ever have a chance to be in uh, the LA area, it's very worth it to go out to Long Beach and tour the Queen Mary.
getting married. <laughs> As Cindy said, absolutely beautiful. But think about this, you know, today like even athletics, you know, athletes fly across the ocean, they can play tennis or whatever, it doesn't matter where they go or any kind of sporting event. In these days it wasn't that easy to get around. You had to plan a trip and allow yourself time for travel. And I guess maybe that was quite a nice thing to do, allowing time for travel, to enjoy it. To maybe go up on the deck, have some tea, and watch things go by at a much slower pace. I realize that. I love flying and Cindy and I have flown over the United States many times but it's not until you take a long drive that suddenly you realize all the things you're missing by flying. But in our hectic world today we don't really always have the opportunity to take the time. You know, sit back and relax. When Cindy and I traveled around the United States it was almost, uh, well, I think it was seven weeks that we spent on the road. And it wasn't enough, I might have to add. We could spend a year traveling around the US and make new discoveries continually and, and still not cover everything or even close to it. That's one of the reasons I keep coming back to this. And man, I would love to spend six months around Los Angeles and really focus on everything because we only had a, a limited time around LA and again, just didn't cover everything that there is. There's just so many amazing things to discover for everyone's different tastes and likes. He's to the left of it. So you can drive right down to the beach. There's lots of parking. I could see it even with my camera. I don't know how warm the water is, but... And then further on, there's a long pier that goes out. And if we go that far, that'll be plenty good for today. And While we were checking around the Queen Mary, we were already making plans, or I was making plans, for which way we would travel when, when, once we got off the ship, coming into Long Beach and checking out some of the beaches. Really easy to get around, and it's beautiful. I fell in love with Long Beach, I fell in love with Manhattan Beach, with... Uh, Santa Monica, I mean, uh, you name it. It's any one of those places call home so easy. For six months, traveling around. 
filming. How many people left their homes for good, crossed the ocean sailing into New York City aboard this great ship to call America home, start a new family, a new life, I've said this in videos, I mean, you take a look around the United States, it's so easy to understand why people want to come. And none of that has to do with the politics. There is a high quality of life. And even though it gets harder and harder for people to realize the American dream, it's still there. Perhaps think of a merry-go-round and how it goes around and you got to reach out for that ring. It's like that for many people. You go round and round, but occasionally somebody grabs a ring. The officer's quarters aboard, aboard the Queen Mary. Elegant. Classic. Stylish. Formal. Our trip around the United States was so rewarding. I mean, we went to uh, Kennedy Space Center and saw where the uh, moon flights were directed from, the way it was back in the days. Just like we're seeing the Queen Mary's officer's quarters the way it was. Or in Seattle, going to the Museum of Flight and seeing great aircraft from a bygone era. Part one of the tour of the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. Thank you for watching our videos.